Welcome to Battle Space. I know this video has been requested for quite some time, so I finally got it done. There's just been so much going on with uh, since we've released Battle Space. It's doing extremely well, and we're so happy that it is. I want to take this moment to thank you guys, everyone that's purchased the book, everyone that's thinking about it, and will that will eventually purchase the uh, the rules. Um, just want to thank you guys. It's everything's just moving at such a fast pace. And that we uh we that we weren't expecting. We knew that we had put a lot into the game, and it's um it, it's doing exceptionally well. So again, it's it's thanks to you guys. Um, so thank you again. Uh, so basically, this video is going to show you guys the rules. Um, we're going to do the first mission that is from the rule book. I'm going to take you to the table. I'm going to show you guys uh, everything you get with uh, the purchase of Battle Space. As far as the rule book and the cards, I'm going to show you guys my table setup. I'm going to be playing on a two by two table uh, just to kind of get the game going. Um, it, so it's going to be quick. And other than that, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, I, I'm happy I can do it for you. Thank you guys. So here's my uh, table that's off to the side of the board. Um, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what I've got going on over here. Um, so I'm just going to start with, uh, the, and these are the components that, um, that come along with the rule book. Um, you know, obviously not the models or anything like that and the dice. Um, so that's obviously my stuff. <laughs> um, but basically what you're going to get is you're going to get the rule book, um, that's not next to me at the moment. Um, and you're going to also get these, uh, cards. So we've got 12 soldier cards and out of the 12 to build your fire team, you're um, going to take four of those soldiers from that 12. Um, and so the soldiers that I have uh, for my fire team today will be, um, it's going to be Steven uh, Baybrook. Um, the reason I'm taking him is because he has such a low initi initiative of, of five. Um, so it's gonna be easy for me to, or hopefully easy for me to uh, activate him every time. And I've also given him a gear card, but we're going to come back to the gear cards. Let's go through our soldiers first. Uh, next, we've got uh, Patrick Singletary. Um, again, low initiative. I, I, I'm i not the best when it comes to uh, rolling a D20. So what I want to do is I want to have my base initiative scores as low as possible um, so I can just I can activate as uh, as often as I can um, or uh, give whatever small boost I need. Um, to, to make sure I get these initiative uh, these initiatives um, passed. Um, so the next guy we've got is Robert River. Um, and here are the models. And as you can see, I've got them, uh, uh, the base is color coded. Um, so what I do is I just flip the base over as I activate them and that's how I keep track. And I usually keep all of this stuff near the, um, the soldier cards. Um, last but not least, we've got Pedro Marizaldi um, with initiative of eight. Uh, let's take a closer look at the cards real quick so you know what's going on. Um, so first, the first number in this stat block you have um, next to the heart is your HP. A soldier can take four hit points um, before they are down. When it's, once a soldier is down, he's laid on his side. He doesn't get to make any initiative rolls. He can't... Um, he can't benefit from anything. He can't help um, anyone else benefit from any abilities that he may have. He, he's just inactive. Um, the only thing you can do with a down soldier is uh, is drag them once you're in base contact with him, um, and that's drag them, you know, out of line of fire or uh, to a place to where maybe you can medic them. Um, so so you can medic a soldier, um, getting them back into the fight. Okay, um, but and that's if they only have up to four hits on them, four wounds on them. Um, if something were to happen and they were to get a uh, get five plus wounds, um, they are KIA, which means they are removed from the board. There's no bringing them back. Um, I will see if we come across something like that during the game. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> um, next, again, is our initiative. You heard me talking about that. Um, to activate your soldier, you need to roll equal you need to roll equal to or higher than their initiative. Uh, once you do so, you get to give your soldier two orders. 
Um, if you fail the initiative, you draw a sit rep card, and I'll show you what that is in a second. Uh, basically, um, after you draw a sit rep card, you apply the effects um, um, to, of the sit rep card to the mission area immediately, and then your soldier gets to make a, uh, a single move um, order. Um, below that, you've got the accuracy. Um, and so in his case, he has an accuracy of plus two. So um, when you're making a shoot, when you're making a shooting attack, you're going to roll um, the d20 and add that accuracy score. So if I rolled a uh, 15 and we add his plus two, that's 17. So that 17 is probably going to hit just about anything that's in the game right now. Um, other, underneath that is the fight icon. Um, and he has a plus two to fight and it works um, exactly like uh, shooting. Um, what the only difference being is the model, the models need to be in base contact. And again, I'll kind of show you how hand-to-hand -hand contact works, um, or hand-to-hand -hand combat, excuse me, uh, works once we get into the game. All right, moving on, well, let's move on to the gear cards. So gear cards, a fire team gets, uh, what is it, 12 points of gear cards, um, and any one soldier, I believe, it can carry up to six points of gear cards. Um, and so right now, Marizaldi is our team leader, which gives him a plus one to his initiative role. I made sure to attach that to him um, so we can bring that eight down one. Um, also, what we call this is their loadout. So when you, put, you give them gear cards, you put it behind their player card or the soldier card, and uh, that's their loadout. And they can only have, again, six points of uh, gear in their loadout. Um, he also has the M65 grenade, and it deals one wound to, to all models that are um, within the AOE. Um, and that AOE would be this maneuver card. So this maneuver card is kind of the one of the main components of the game. Um, basically, this handles movement. This handles uh, the template for throwing a grenade. Um, this handles the drift uh, with this point in the middle being the point of impact. So that's usually what you're going to center over whatever your target is. Um, in most cases, you also use this for suppression fire and so on. Um, so this is a big deal. So you gotta have that to play the game. Um, let's move on to our sit rep deck. So the sit rep deck um, in the game, first is the player phase, then the sit rep phase. Um, sit rep phase is simple. You draw a card, you read that card, um, you apply the effects from that card to the board. And uh, after that, you obviously put the card into this card pile. And when you're playing the game, um, we'll kind of go over this, but um, in some cases, some soldiers don't activate, some enemies, excuse me, don't activate from the sit rep card. So um, they will get to activate um, once um, the sit rep card has been resolved. Um, and speaking of your enemies, also there's 24 cards in the sit rep deck. Let's see. Um, the, for the first mission, which is the mission I have set up um, in the, um, so far, oh, the mission that I have set up is the, the first mission from the rule book. Um, so in the rule book, you'll see that it says for the first mission, use the Alahaid fighters um, when the uh, here's the straggler card and the so we'll be using that card here's a sniper card there is a card in the sit rep deck that can bring a sniper out so we'll have that one handy and this is a group of Awahid fighters and this is when they're when they come out in again a group uh, which is called an element in this game um, so they can come out as stragglers which is a single model or they can come out as uh, a group of models that kind of move together and and uh, attack together and, and such. All right, um, and the difference between a straggler and, a, and an element is what I just said, and that an element has to stay together where stragglers can run across the board however they want. Um, not how they want, but uh, well, within the guidelines of the rules, obviously. Um, then we have an Al-Wahid leader. He, you won't see him today. 
um, but I just wanted to show you his card. And you also have the al uh soldier. And he is just an upgraded version of the fighter. So, um, and again, you won't see these, definitely won't see these guys today. Um, so I think that is it. Um, I'll just show you some of the um, tokens I use and dice. So you need a D20 and a D6 for the game. The D20 is going to handle most of your rolls. Um, the D6 is is not used too often. Um, I think there's, there's really only a few cards that tell you to use a D6. Um, in certain cases to put out a, a random number of al uh, stragglers or to tell you how big a, an enemy element's going to be. Um, other thing I can think of with D6 is, I think that's all I can think. Oh, you know what? Um, the al uh soldier, um, to every time, well, I, you know what? I'm not going to even touch on that. You'll have to get the, the rules and you'll see that for yourself. Um, that way we can save some time too, because you won't know what I'm talking about. So wound markers, you're gonna need those. I typically keep, again, I keep, not again, but I keep my wound markers on my uh, soldier cards or next to the uh, enemy models. Um, you're gonna need a token for suppression fire. Um, and, that will just point at the point in the direction that the uh, the model is applying the suppression. Um, I've got this model here to use as a soldier that we will hopefully find during the mission. Um, hopefully we, we rescue him. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Um, and just uh, two other color tokens, um, one for your objectives. Um, I'll use this purple and this red uh, token I'll use to um, signify any uh, bonuses or anything like that that the enemy element may have. So uh, that's it. I've got a, uh, a little tray here of some enemy models. Um, you don't need a lot. Um, so I, I usually tell people you need anywhere from 10 to 15 roughly um, models and that should get you through a game um, for the most part. But other than that, that's uh, that's all you're, you're going to need. Obviously, the rule book. Um, and I will see if I can reach the rule book without taking the camera too far away. Um, and Battle Space rule book. You'll definitely need that. But uh, so this all comes together. Your cards and the rule book, your soldier cards and everything like that. Um, and you'll need to supply your tokens and your dice. So. Uh, without further ado, let's get to the table and uh, get this mission started. All right, guys, it's time to get the battle underway. I've got my fire team deployed at the edge of the board within the area of the maneuver card. And I've got the setup for mission one from the rule book. So we've got our uh, downed or disabled Hummer over here with al Haid enemies surrounding it. We've got one position right behind this house that you can't really see. And then we've got another guy in the back corner over here. And again, this is just on a two by two board, uh, just to give you guys a demonstration of how the rules work. Um, so you can know exactly what you're getting into when you get a copy of Battle Space. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and Start with the player phase. We're going to try to activate Marizaldi first, which is our team leader. He has a initiative of eight. He's the team leader, so he gets a plus one to his role. So he activates on a seven. He rolls a 20. So he gets an extra. When, when you roll a 20, nat, a nat 20, you get an extra order. So typically when a soldier activates, they get one order or two orders, excuse me. Uh, but now that he rolled a 20, he gets to have three orders. So with his first order, he is going to, he's actually going to make an advance. So an advance is essentially a double move. It costs you uh, two orders. 
So he's going to use two of those orders to make this advance, which would be here on top of these rocks and there. Now, with his final order, he's going to, we're going to see if he can make a shooting attack at that al Haid fighter. So you can't tell, but I'm, I'm getting down low to see if he's got line of sight. And you know what? He can see the Awaid's gun or his gun or his leg, I'm sorry, sticking out from behind that building. The Awaid does is not in base contact with anything. So he's got a shot at a negative one. So Awaid fighters have a threat level of eight, or excuse me, have a threat level of nine. But when an Awaid fighter um, does not have line of sight to another Awaid, their threat level goes down to an eight. Um, and because this wall is in the way, he can't see those guys that are downrange surrounding the Hummer. So he has an eight. He's going to go back up to nine because he does have cover. So here we go. Or he's obscured. I'm sorry. Obscured cover. 17. That's a hit. And with that, Marizaldi drops that Al Haid, and the rest of the fire team can move. Let's see. Let's see if we can activate some more guys. Uh, next up, we're going to go with River, who's on the red base. That's a 19. Sorry, I didn't roll that on the table, but it's a 19. I'll try to keep these rolls on the table so you... You know everything legit is legit. So he's going to also use a an advance. So he's going to move up to here. He's going to move right behind River. Oh, I'm sorry. He's going to move right behind Marizaldi. Uh, next, we're going to activate. Um, let's go with Singletary. Singletary has a six. He rolls a 13. He's going to move out. Same deal. He's going to just do a, an advance. He's going to stack up behind the rest of the fire team. And last but not least, we're going to move Baybrook, which is he, the gentleman with the purple base. 14. We are doing excellent right now. And same deal. We're going to do an advance. Stacking up. All right. So all four of our members in the fire team have gotten to move, they've got to activate, and they pushed up. Um, they're gonna make their way, they're gonna push hard to this Humvee and uh, as quick as they can. So now that the player phase is over, we're going to switch over, we're gonna move to the next phase, which is the sit rep phase. Sit rep phase, we're gonna draw a sit rep card. And it says, we are pinned down. The straggler nearest to the last soldier that attempted an initiative roll is equipped with an MG-42 machine gun. He will apply suppression fire when he attacks and not move until there are no soldiers in line of sight. He targets the closest soldier in line of sight, preferring targets that don't have cover. So the nearest straggler is going to be this gentleman that you guys can't really see, but he's right there. Um, so he now has, he has a machine gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark him with this, just so I can remember that. Okay. All right. So the next step in the sit rep phase is to activate all enemies that did not activate from a sit rep card. So we've got these enemy right, we got the enemy here, um, this enemy element. Now, when moving an enemy element, very simple, you want to pick just one guy. He's going to be known as the point man. You're just going to move him toward. Your, heat, your soldiers, and then all the other members of that element will then just be placed 
as if they were just making a straight line towards him. And they just have to finish their movement underneath the um, maneuver card, like so. All right, they don't see anything. They're not going to, they don't have anything to shoot at. So that's their activation. All right. Next up, um, and uh, just if I fail to mention, this is a civilian that I just kind of threw in the mix just so you guys can see what would happen um, the first time a civilian has cleared line of sight to um, a soldier. So hopefully we'll get to play that out. But other than that, civilians don't have any sort of movement um, unless you want to add something into the game for some random movement. That's always a thing you can do. But, uh, but we're going to just kind of keep things uh, focused and we're just going to go with the rules as written. So he's going to just stand there and uh, I guess he's waiting to cross the street. All right, let's continue. So now that the uh, sit rep phase is over, we're going to move to the clear phase. Now with uh, the clear phase, you're going to obviously check for um, completed objectives. We don't have any objectives that have completed yet. Um, then you're going to clear any uh, status markers or anything like that that you may have that have met their duration. And then after that, you're just going to get prepared for the next turn. So my D6 I have sitting off to the side to keep track of the turn. I'm going to go ahead and put that on turn two. Um, and just in case I fail to mention, um, there is no turn limit for the for mission one from the rule book. This is kind of just to get you into the uh, flow of everything. And so you're not your back's not against the wall. All right, so let's pick up again with the player phase and let's get our guys moving. We'll see if we can uh, we can get to this uh, soldier that is in distress. All right, get my D20 here. All right, let's go ahead and try to activate Marizaldi. Again, he's got a, he's an eight initiative, but since he's a team leader, he's going to activate on a seven. Three. All right. Not a great start to the uh, player phase. Let's draw that sit rep card. So remember, whenever you fail to activate a, so when you fail an initiative roll for your soldier, you have to draw an initiative card. And then you obviously read it and you apply the effects of the initiative card immediately. So contact all enemies, all enemy elements activate. They will move toward the nearest soldier and make an attack. If there are no soldiers in line of sight after the move, the enemy element will perform a second move. So on this two by two board, things can get deadly very quickly. Um, they, they don't have much ground to cover. Um, and so you're going to be in the enemy's face or right away. Um, again, I'm playing on this two by two just so we can actually have that happen on a three by three. I'd have a little more breathing room. But let's go ahead and move this enemy element by starting with our point man. And these guys are going to be on top of us in no time at all. All right. If they still don't see anything. They're going to keep moving. They know we're here. The good thing about this is now that Hummer is completely um, unguarded. So we can hopefully deal with this threat that we are about to face and uh, get to that, get to that Hummer. All right. So we try to activate, um, we try to activate Marizaldi. He failed that. So we put, we drew, we drew our sit rep card. Now, whenever you fail an initiative roll, like I said, you draw that sit rep card, you uh, go ahead and play it out on the board. Then that soldier that failed the active the activation the initiative roll excuse me gets to make a move action or order so he's just going to obviously he's got the space he needs to get here so he's going to get in cover he's going to position himself in base contact because i've got a feeling that these guys are going to be uh coming coming in on us we're going to get some contact here pretty soon all right, next up, we're going to activate River with his 8 initiative, 13. All right, so I'm going to have River 
we want River to push up. So he's going to push up here. That's one order. And he's going to push up right. You know, this is going to be dangerous, but I'm going to try. I'm trying to get him as far as I can up the board um, so we can try to clog up that opening. All right. Next up, we are going to activate, um, we're just going to keep going in line here. We're going to try to activate Singletary with his six plus and a one. That is a one. That is not a good deal right there. So that one, he, uh, we're going to draw a sit rep card, see what happens here. Lost my balance. All right. Threat level 10, roll immediately. The soldier furthest from an enemy lost his footing. If the roll is failed, the soldier falls prone. All right, so the soldier furthest from an enemy, which is going to be um, Baybrook. So Bay, let's roll for Baybrook. Three, he falls prone. He trips. This mission's starting to, uh, to foobar here. Hopefully we can get it back on the rails. All right, let's put that card into this card pile. Now, um, who is that? Now, Sing now uh, Singletary, excuse me, can make his move. Since things are not going how we plan, he's going to just stack up behind behind Marizaldi, and then we're going to have to get. We've got to get him up. We've got to get uh, Baybrook up. So let's roll for him. See if we can get him on his feet here. Three, not a good, not good at all. He only needed a five, so that's not good. All right, um, so now we're going to draw another sit rep card, which is contact. All stragglers move and attack the closest soldier in line of sight, preferring targets that don't have cover. We only have one straggler, so he's going to move. He's going to move up that and he is he has no uh enemies or he has no soldiers excuse me in line of sight so that is his turn baybrook's going to now use his uh order his move order to just stand and that is it all right um all right, now that we have tried, we've tried to activate all of our soldiers, we're gonna go again to the sit rep phase. We've got contact rear. The enemy straggler or uh, an element, excuse me, nearest to the last soldier that attempted to, an initiative roll moves and attacks the nearest soldier in line of sight. So uh, we'll see, we got our nearest thing's gonna be the element here. So they are going to roll this, or um, excuse me, they're not going to roll. They're going to move. So they're coming, they're coming fast and they have, they don't have line of sight. So again, they're not going to get to attack here. Okay. Let's see here. Now that was the sit rep phase. And now we're going to go to the we're going to go to uh, the clear phase again, and basically that's just how the game go goes from this point. Again, we don't have anything um, that would uh, that in, we don't have any objectives completed or anything that would end the mission, um, and we would we don't have any status effects on the board to clear. All right, so we're going to uh, pick up with this turn three. Um, first thing I'm going to do with this turn is I'm going to try to activate Baybrook. Uh, he is the model with the purple base, and uh, he has the um, he is the radio operator. Uh, that's the card. He, that's the gear card he has. Um, so that gives him that team position. Basically, what the radio operator does or the ability is it allows any soldier within the maneuver within the area of the maneuver card along with him 
to uh, re-roll failed initiative rolls. So I want to put him in a good position um, up with the rest of the team to make sure I can take advantage of that. He's got a five for initiative, so I need to roll that five plus, and I roll a four. Uh, so that's not going to happen there. So now we're going to draw a sit rep card. War cry. All enemies in the mission area have plus one threat level until the end of the turn. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, so now our guys are beefed up to uh, a 10 threat level. So that's just going to make things harder. And these guys are the, the only thing standing between us and the, um, and the uh, objective right now. But let's go ahead and get Baybrook up to the rest of the guys here. Um, kind of get him out of the way. All right. So with that, we're going to have to try to wing it here. Let's try to... Let's see. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to River, uh, Soldier with the Red Base. He doesn't have a tourniquet. He doesn't have... I wish he had a grenade right now because he's in a, a great, uh, an ideal spot to just lob a grenade over that wall. Um, so maybe I might save him. And uh, we'll go with uh, Singletary. He's got an initiative six, so that should be somewhat easy to pull off, especially with Baybrook right next to him if he fails that by chance. So here we go. We got we need an initiative. We need a roll of six plus. And we get a reroll just in case we don't pull it off. 19. So we get that. So now we're going to move Singletary up. Uh, here's one rule for you. Uh, friendlies can move through uh, friendly models. So he's going to just move through um, Marizaldi with his first order up to there and then we're going to see if we can get lucky oh you know what um yeah now we're going to see if we can lob a grenade over this wall or we're going to toss it over the wall um and deal one wound to all enemies in the area and this will also show you guys how you use gear cards such as a grenade so the M67 grenade, it says for one order, this tossed weapon deals one wound to all models in its AOE. So how that's going to work is, first thing we do is we place the maneuver card anywhere touching the model. Now this line you see here is the throwing arc. And since this throwing arc is clearing the the wall we can we can lob the grenade so the grenade's not going to be blocked and at the end of the throwing arc is where you would place the edge of the card with this arrow right here pointing at the soldier or model who's throwing the grenade so basically right here, we've got a few guys. We've got just about everyone underneath that template right now, um, except for this one guy with the blue pants on. But now we need to roll for drift. So again, you'll see these numbers here. Uh, depending on what you roll, the card's going to either move in th that direction, uh, one card with, or it'll be a direct hit on a 9 to 20. It's a 5. So it was originally here. It's going to go one here and hit everything in this area, which is nothing. So we tossed our grenade. Um, and it it's a it's a bad toss, and it blows up right over here. And these uh Al Wahid fighters live to fight another day. Um, once you use a gear card. You check out the quantity. In this in this case, we've got a quantity of one right there. Sorry about that glare. 
So now you just discard that. That card's been used. You can put it to the side. He doesn't get that back or anything like that. So that's unfortunate. But uh, we're just going to keep, we're going to roll with the punches. So right now we've got uh, River that can activate still. And we've got Marizaldi that we still have up. So let's do, uh, let's get, let's get, um, I want to play it very carefully here. We got another, we, Marizaldi has a grenade. So let's see if we can push him up. And, uh. Get past these guys. Get uh get another grenade out. Marizaldi has uh, needs a seven because he's team leader. That's a fifteen. So Marizaldi is going to now he's going to try this again. He's going to move up for one order. His second order is going to be tossing his M sixty seven grenade. Hopefully with better luck. And here we go, same deal. He can clear it. We see where it lands, arrows pointing at him. And now we just roll, hoping for a nine plus. And that's a 17, that's a direct hit. So everyone, under every model underneath that template is going to take one point of damage. The Awahaid fighters only have one HP, so that grenade, Deals each one of these guys one wound, and we can remove them from the board. Now, normally, well, not normally, I'm sorry. So, the difference between when a soldier uh, takes his maximum hit points, um, a soldier is downed. Um, and for enemies, um, enemies don't get the option of being down once they hit their max HP, they are uh, instantly KIA. Okay, and hopefully we can kind of show that mechanic uh, in more detail later on in the game. All right, so that grenade's been used. Uh, that's good. Now we've got a clear path. I think we've got one guy, which is the soldier with the, uh, the, uh, the MG42 machine gun. So let's, uh, let's watch this guy closely. All right, so only guy we got left to uh, activate is River, who has a eight, or needs an eight to activate, and an eight on the dot. So he's going to push up. He's going to do an advance. Again, an advance is two orders. Well, maybe maybe he won't do an advance. Let's see. Got to get him there. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and do two orders. So that'll push him up to the edge of this wall roughly and then this will take him he's going to run to this car behind cover so that'll put him there and he's going to be in base contact with that car you guys can see that i'm going to see if i can get you guys a better angle forgive me if i mess anything up all right there we go hopefully the camera stays still for you Okay, so that is River's activation. He used a, an, an advanced move to basically run up into base contact to get some cover. So he is, uh, he's got his cover, and we're going to move on from there. Uh, I think, yep, that's uh, the end of all my soldiers. So now we're going to go to the sit rep phase. We're going to draw a card. And it is, I have movement. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or terrain feature um, to the soldier with the highest initiative. If two or more soldiers have the, an equal initiative, the player must choose. Okay, so um, let's see. Our highest initiative is going to be actually a tie between River and Marizaldi. They both have eight. Um... So, let's see here. Um, so, let's see. This is going to be the difference between um, a guy popping up either here, if you can see that, or 
possibly here. I'm obviously, I think he's going to just show up here regardless because I think this is the closest door or, you know, um, just terrain feature. So, I mean, honestly, if you want, you can have an enemy come out of a car if you want. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put him. Actually, you know what? Let's do that to uh, sh to show you guys another mechanic. So an enemy is sitting in this car and he uh, he notices that a soldier has run up and uh, is taking cover behind the car. He gets out of the car door, which is the right side driver's side door, and that instantly puts him in base contact um, with River. So uh, this is really good. This will show you guys how hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat happens. Whenever uh, models enter base contact with each other, obviously opposing models um, enter base contact with each other, you, you instantly go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. And hand to hand works similar to um, it works similar to the initiative, um, or not sorry, not the initiative, but shooting. Uh, but basically, what you want to do is you take um, here. I'll pull this card up. You're going to take that fight stat, which is plus two for river, um, and you're going to roll the die. You just need to meet or exceed the enemy's threat level. Um, I'm sorry. I think I forgot to, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. We're still in the same turn. Okay. So it's the same turn. His threat level is actually right now at, uh, because of war cry, it is a 10. So let's see here. River has a two. I'm sorry if I said three earlier, he's got a two for his, uh, his fight. So 15 plus two. 17 he uh clearly is the victor here he's going to deal one wound that's all he needs to deal to uh eliminate this enemy <coughs> and we can <coughs> take that enemy off the board so again with hand-to-hand -hand combat um as soon as those models enter base contact you go ahead and you resolve uh hand-to-hand -hand combat just like that sweet and simple all right um so that was our sit. That was our uh, sit rep card. Um, now we go into the second portion of the sit rep phase, which is any enemy models on the board that have uh, that have not activated due to a sit rep card will activate now. All right. So one thing I'm going to do is I have this token here. Um, that is I'm sorry. You couldn't see where. Canvas pointing. I've got this uh, token here to represent suppression, and what I just do is I use the um, the longest burst here uh, to use as an arrow to to uh, to represent where the um, model using suppression is aiming. So I can just do that. That lets me know later on. I just if I need to, for reference, I can just make this line go straight there. And so this guy's going to just uh, continue to apply suppression fire. So uh, with that, that is the end of that, tur uh, that turn. I'm gonna go into the next turn and we will begin to activate our soldiers and, and see if we can continue to push towards this Humvee. Um, we're doing pretty good right now. There's no other uh, enemy elements coming out. Um, and I probably shouldn't have said that because, yeah, um, you know what happens when you, uh, when you, uh, jinx yourself like that. Okay. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to start with, um, we're going to start this turn with, uh, Baybrook, um, our radio operator who needs a five to activate. He rolls a 15. And he's just going to push up to keep up with the rest of the guys. And he's just going to use his two orders to do an advanced move. Um, and the reason I'm saying advanced versus j moving twice is you can only perform um, an action or the named action once. So if I move, I perform a move, 
I can't perform a second move. I have to, it has to be a, uh, it has to be an advance or, um, um, or something along those lines, or I can't shoot, shoot or anything like that. So you can only perform something once. Um, so that's why I say, okay, let's do an advance and advance is a run. Okay. Um, here we go. So that was Baybrook. Now we are going to move up Singletary with the yellow base. He rolls a seven. He needed a six, so he is good to go. He's going to do an advance also. Now, again, we have to skirt around this wall here. Otherwise, we'll be under suppression fire as well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peek out from behind this wall and uh, we're gonna see if he has a line of sight here to him. I'm gonna get a little bit of, he had a little, uh, just a wee bit more card so he could, he can, peek himself out a little more. Now let's remember we've got that suppression. I don't want to cheat. So that suppression is directly over uh, River. So he had about, he had maybe about this much card left. I don't want to keep pushing it, but that is definitely, he's poking his head out enough to uh, to have visual of the, of the uh, al Haid fighter who is uh, applying suppression fire to a uh, river. And fortunately, I used, an it, I used an advance to move up. So I can't, I don't have any more orders to, uh, to do, to use to actually shoot. So hopefully we can save it into next round. Um, next we've got, let's, uh, let's move up Marizaldi just before we uh, try to activate River. Marizaldi, again, needing a seven because he is the uh, team leader. And he rolls a seven, whew. Um, but good thing Baybrook was next to him uh, just in case if he was, uh, if he rolled under that seven, Baybrook would have uh, allowed him to re-roll. So now Marizaldi is going to also do an advance, but he's gonna come on this side. Let's see. Okay, it's right there. You know what? He's gonna he's gonna get that advance right there. Okay. So again, Marisaldi is taking the uh, suppression fire here. I'm sorry, excuse me, River is taking the suppression fire here. I know it's a kind of a bad angle for you guys, but um, they are not underneath that maneuver card. So, and even if it were to continue back, they would not be underneath it. Um, all right, so last but not least is River. Um, and I wanted to save him last for uh, two reasons. Um, one, just in case if some enemies were to, uh, to pop out behind us. Um, that can make things a little more stickier, but because River is under suppression fire, he also, he can't make, he, he, every roll for him will be at a negative two, okay? Um, so that's one thing, and even if he does activate, he won't be able to use a move order or an advance or anything like that. He can't move, period, all right? So he needs an, uh, 10 at this point, which this is going to be hard to come by. So let's see. I uh, wish me luck, guys. I need this 10 because uh, we're going to be drawing a sit rep card right after this. So I don't want to draw two back to back. 15. All right. I'm going to let you guys see that so you know I'm not pulling any shenanigans. That's a 15. All right. So uh, River can fire back. Um, here's another mechanic for you guys. He's going to do an aim shot um, at this uh, soldier that is um, 
that has suppression fire on him, okay? So with this aim shot, he is going to basically uh, negate that negative two to every roll that he uh, he would receive right now. Because um, otherwise he'd be, uh, he'd, need, he'd need like a uh, 12 to, uh, to hit this guy. Um, and I think this might actually be our first time firing at the enemy. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, I'm going to pull up the, his card so you guys can take a look at that and then we will uh, go from there. So let's pull up Brewer's card again. So here is Brewer's card. Which way are we going here? Sorry about the glare. So for shooting basically what you want to do is you're going to roll you're going to add whatever number is next to this uh this crosshair icon um and then that is going to be your result so he's getting a plus three um he has a negative two because he's under suppression so he's only going to be rolling at a plus one right now all right and we need a nine plus and he does not get it he rolls a five and uh, six, which is plus one. And so see, that's how suppression can really hamper things for you. He's not able to move. He's uh, taking some negative uh, modifiers. So that's it. But I'm happy because there was no sit rep card drawn uh, just now. So we're going to go to the sit rep phase and let's see what we get. Sniper, oh, we did not need this card. Place one enemy sniper on the highest elevation feature from the uh, furthest, excuse me, from the soldiers. Um, this enemy sniper will activate before each sit rep phase. When the sniper activates, um, obviously he's going to stay on an elevated area. He will move toward the nearest soldier and attack um, a soldier that is in line of sight. Um, and this card stays in play until the sniper is KIA. So the enemy Al-Hayid sniper, let's see if I can dig up a model that will be appropriate for this sniper. Um, I think he'd be good enough. Well, this is, a, it's a sniper. Let's see, where, where are we gonna put it? It's gotta be the furthest from these guys. Um. On elevated terrain so I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see let's just say this is the furthest point I believe it actually is the furthest point um, from the soldiers so he's gonna be on elevated he's on elevated terrain um, and he's gonna be at the furthest of uh, the furthest point from these guys so that will place him there, and I will get my Al Haid sniper card ready, and we will go from there. Okay. Um, one thing to mention, I kind of uh, forgot about this a little later on here, is this enemy. Well, both enemy Al Haid fight. Well, the enemy Al Haid fighter is actually at an eight right now because well he was at an eight because there was no uh al -Haid, uh fighters in the area along with him or any yeah so okay um let's see what are we gonna do next um now he's going to continue to apply suppression fire we drew our sit rep card to bring him out He's going to continue to just apply suppression, so he's not going to take any other actions. Um, so now we're going to go back to the player phase. Now, we really need to push forward. Let me roll my D6 over here to keep track of the turn. I believe we should be on turn five. Excuse, uh, Forgive me if I'm, I'm off by a turn or two. Um, I don't think I am, though. So let's uh, let's let's really push forward on this one. First thing we're going to do is we're going to activate Baybrook because he's further in the back and I want to just get him up so he can continue to assist with his uh, his um, radio operator ability. We need a five plus. 
He rolls a 17. I'm going to try not to keep rolling these behind the building um, buildings so you guys can uh, I hopefully hopefully see the rolls. Um, let's go. Now I'm going to definitely speed things up here. All right. So he's going to move. He's just going to move up, but he's going to stay behind cover. He's going to stay behind the cover of the wall. So he has one other order, but he's not going to do anything right now. He can't really do anything else. Um, next, we're going to activate. Let's see. Let's do. Let's activate Singletary. He needs a six plus. He rolls a seven. Awesome. Um, and he's going to try to take another shot at the Al Haid fighter, applying suppression fire to River. Okay, uh, Singletary has a plus two on his accuracy, and he is going to roll. Let's see what we can get. He rolls a 10, and then plus two is 12. Regardless of where the enemy Halid fighter is, if he's getting a plus, uh, he's not getting any um, bonuses or anything like that. So, he is definitely down. Um... So with that shot, we remove that suppression. River's free to move around now, luckily. So that was River's first, or I'm sorry, that was, um, yeah, that was Singletary's first order. His second order is going to be to push up. To here. Now, um, we can show off a, another mechanic here. So... We're going to take a look at, and this is something I, I could have done before, my mistake. Um, this civilian that is standing out in the open, he uh, has clear line of sight to, he may, um, Singletary is actually, uh, is most likely obscured just by that car, just barely, but it's just enough. But he can clearly see um, Marizaldi standing there. So the first time, a civilian sees a, uh, a soldier. You get you have to roll on the civilian reaction chart. That's on page uh, six eight sixteen. Forgive me. That's on page sixteen in the rule book. Let me just double check that. Make sure that is page sixteen. Yep, yeah, that is page sixteen in the rule book. Uh, That's the first chart. And so now, again. The first time a civilian sees a soldier um, in clear line of sight, you roll on the civilian reaction chart. So, uh, and this would obviously happen at the end of the soldier's move or, or whatnot. So uh, we want to roll high on this. There's no modifiers or anything like that, um, unless you have a particular uh, sit rep card, which is the translator. He um, will manipulate this die roll. But let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. A six. So a six. That's going to fall into the second tier here, which is a, anything between four to seven. Uh, let's see. The civilian screams. This is great. We didn't need this right now. Uh, the civilian moves in the opposite direction of the soldiers. Uh, the nearest enemy moves toward the soldiers that caused the civilian reaction. Or right, um, So... Um, only soldier, we, uh, he's going to move away. Get my maneuver card. He's going to move ah! away from the soldiers and the nearest enemy, which we only have one, which is the sniper. He's going to stay on. Yep. Obviously he's going to stay on the terrain here. He's going to move up. I'm just going to say, uh, to, for, to simplify things that he you know he's not going to jump over this building or anything like that he's just gonna stay up here all right um and that was that so if i am keeping up with everything i've activated two of my guys um we still have river and i believe we have um baybrook to activate all right so let's get a Let's let's, uh, let's move River out of cover, and we'll go from there. Thirteen. 
He's going to move up. Let's see. That would be in here. In here. We're going to play it safe. He's going to push up into this cover. Um, but we're going to try to hustle to this uh, this Humvee if we can. Because this sniper is going to take a shot at us at the end of the next turn. Or at the end of the turn. The sit rep phase. All right. Babe Rook rolls an 11. So he's going to swing around here. He is going to try to make it there. He's going to, Babe Rook's going to, he's going to run around. He's going to see if he can, he has no cover right now, so that's not good for him. And so that's all our, all of our soldiers activated. Uh, I hope this uh, angle is somewhat good for you guys. Let me see if I can zoom in without just destroying the shot. All right, there we go. Okay, um, now we're going to go to the sit-rep phase. All right, contact front. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or terrain feature. All right, so um, uh, to the nearest feature to the soldier with the highest initiative, which we already said that we've got two soldiers with uh, equal initiative, so I get to uh, choose between the two. Um, let's grab a model. An enemy model and both of our highest initiative guys are right here we're just gonna uh, pull put him on the he's gonna get out the driver's side because that makes sense um, and that is it for that card now um, our sniper you know what? I forgot to activate our sniper before I drew that card. So let's go ahead and just play it out with the sniper. He's going to target the closest um, soldier, preferring the, a soldier without cover. That's going to be Baybrook. So Baybrook now needs to roll. Um, he needs to beat the sniper's um, threat level, which is 13. That's, that's a tall That's a tall order. Um, especially for Baybrook, who has, well, no, he doesn't really get anything to help him out here. So, let's see here. Um, now, the sniper did move. Oh, so, the sniper card, I'll, I'll read this for you guys so you do know. Okay, it says, uh, if the Alohaid sniper does not move during this activation, during his activation, his threat level is plus one. So he's not going to move because obviously he's got someone in line of sight. So that's how that would work. He would only move if he doesn't have anyone in line of sight. Um, so he's got someone in line of sight. So Baybrook is going to now have to roll a 14. And Baybrook rolls a 13. So close. So close. And because Baybrook... Uh, does not meet or exceed the enemy's threat level. Um, we or the way we the way the game is played is our roles are everything is centered around the soldiers. So this role wasn't to determine if per se the so if the enemy targeting Baybrook hit him. It was more so if Baybrook was going to move out of the way. Now that's somewhat sometimes it's kind of funny for you to wrap your mind around but if you read through the rules there's a updated section that you can find um and it's also on the facebook page um that kind of explains it more um in detail and and for you to wrap your brain around it okay so anyway baybrook takes one wound now normally i put uh, my wounds on my soldier cards but i'm going to put it on the board for you guys so you can um you can have a visual reference to to track the current health of all of our soldiers on the board. All right, so that's the end of the sit rep phase. So we only have one um, enemy element on the board, luckily. So now we're going to go back to the soldier phase. And we need to get the sniper down quick. 
Um, our guys out front have a uh, line of sight, but he is higher, so he's going to get, and so he's going to be obscured, um, and he's on the lip of the building. So all these things are going to make any roll for the soldier is going to be uh, at negative two. Um, so River has the best uh, accuracy with at a plus three. So we're going to try to acu activate him. He needs an eight to activate. We roll a 15 and I continue to roll behind the building. Sorry, guys. Um, so now he activates. Now this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be plus three on the roll. We need a, um, we need a 13. 16. So that's a hit. The enemy sniper only has one hit point, And just like that, River has dropped the sniper. Good shot, River. Good shot. Okay. So now we're going to move on. Actually, you know what? That was just one order for River, and he did not use a, um, oh, this guy's right here. I forgot about that. I, this guy's in plain view, and I totally forgot about him. Um, we're going to just keep everything rolling. Um, we're going to, we're going to, let's see, River's going to try to, he's going to move out here. Actually, he's going to move. Yeah, he's going to move here. That's fine. I think we can drop this guy before uh, before he has a chance to t shoot at us. All right. So, uh, let's see. Baybrook. Okay. Now, we're going to try to activate Singletary here. He needs a six. He rolls a 20. And it's right there. There's that 20. So beautiful. I love seeing it. So he gets an extra order. So now he has three orders. He's going to shoot uh, this guy here. He's got this guy's in base contact. This enemy Al Haid fighter is in base contact with that. So that's a negative two to River's roll. He's got a plus two accuracy. So that's pretty much negated. Uh, he rolls an 18. He drops this guy. This mission is going our way. We're we're chugging along. We're we're moving slower than I would like, but other than that, we are uh, we're clearing these guys out. Uh, River's going to use his. Uh, I'm sorry, Singletary's going to use his uh, last two orders to do an advance. So he's going to go here, there, and now um, the civilian only acts one. He only will act once. Um, so he's already seen them. He's done his his action, um, and so or his reaction. So he won't do anything. If there were another civilian on the board somewhere else, and that civilian saw our soldiers for the first time in clear line of sight, um, then they would you would roll on the reaction chart for that civilian. Okay. Now, um, let's see. That was. Singletary, so we've activated River and Singletary. Um, let's get Marizaldi up. Let's pull him up. 16, I am on fire right now. So he's going to do an advance as well. All right, our guys are moving up. All right. And last but not least, we're going to activate Baybrook, who has one wound. Let's see. I've got a tourniquet on um, one of our guys, so let's do this. Let's, let's activate Baybrook. Baybrook rolls a nine. Phew. Luckily, Baybrook doesn't need much to activate. He only needs a five to activate. And he is going to advance up here. And he's going to, that's there. And we're going to take his wound marker with him. You know, I really like having, I really like having the uh, soldier cards uh, because you can, again, you can put everything you need, all your wound markers, activation markers on your soldier card so it doesn't clutter up the board. Um, 
So again, I, I know I showed you guys at the beginning of the video, but my soldier cards are, uh, are, are down on my table and I'm just referring to that. I'm flipping over my little activation markers I have uh, that match the color of, um, of the bases that the soldiers have. But that's all of our soldiers that have activated. And now we are going to go to the sit rep phase. I hope we can keep things calm. We're right here at the uh, just about to the Hummer to uh, check things out. But we're going to draw this card and see what we get. Oh, of course, trap. The last soldier that attempted an initiative roll um, has stumbled onto a trip wire. That last soldier was Baybrook. So let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> roll for the outcome. So I'm going to roll it. He rolls a nine. So that's actually pretty good. Well, no, actually, no. It, unfortunately, I, I thought it was going to be good enough, but it's not. Let's see. Enemy alerted. This sucks, guys. 1d6 stragglers into the mission area from random edges furthest from the soldiers. All right. Or, or random board edges. Sorry, guys. Um, so let's see here. So 1d6. I hope, I hope. I roll a one <laughs> and I roll five. Did you guys, did you guys see that five? You guys don't see that five. I, I should pretend I rolled a one. So no, I rolled a five. So I'm going to pull five of uh, my al fighters. Um, and now they're going to just appear on random board edges furthest from our soldiers. Our soldiers are somewhat in the middle of the board, but our furthest edges are going to be um, back this way and back behind them. They're, tw they're, uh, they're six o'clock, I, I believe. So let's roll for the first guy. He's going to... Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm rolling a d20, and depending on what the top of the arrow, at the top of the number... Oh, sorry, you guys can't even see that is where it's going where they're going to appear so we've got one guy here and i will zoom out so you guys can see what's going on you guys can see my there we go all right so that's one guy we've got to put out five. Oh, another guy to that corner okay that's there so we got Three more guys. Oh boy, this sucks. So um, this is gonna be over here. Actually, you know what, let's get a different model. This guy, let's get a guy with a gun in his hand. There we go, he's gonna come back here. So it's pointing here. Um, and so now this needs to be an edge furthest from, guys. So this is the furthest point from them that's kind of in that area. All right, um, and we've got another guy. They are loving this corner over here. And now we've got one more that has entered. We're going to put him on this side because the building's in the way. Um, so there we go. So one, two, three, four, five en enemy al -Waqid. Fighters have entered the mission area and uh, they have This is probably the worst time um, That these guys could have come out on us. All right, so um, Continue to move we're moving on this is the sit right phase It's unfortunate that these guys pop up on us right as we're uh, getting close to the Humvee um, But for you guys, it's actually going to be a, a good lesson here um, for the rules. Um, so the rules state that um, for, this is for the sit rep phase. It says any enemy models that did not activate by the sit rep card drawn during the sit rep phase will now activate. Um, so the sit rep card is what placed these guys here. So in this case, they would not activate, okay? Because um, the sit rep card is what manipulated them to come onto the board. So it's it's similar to 
um, activating it. It almost activated them and allowed them to come to the board. Um, so you would not activate these guys again, or they, they would not get any activations or anything like that. But if there was a another guy that was already on the board, which we don't, I'm not missing anybody this time, um, that character would now get to activate. He'd move and if he sees anyone, he would then attack them. Okay, so we're going to go into the next phase. I'm thinking, or not phase, well, the next phase, which is the end phase, or clear phase, excuse me. Uh, clear phase, um, we've got nothing to clear right now, and we're so close to our objective, but we're not quite there yet. So let's continue to play it out um, and get back to the player phase. Um, and so we're here now, round, I think we're at six or seven right now. Um, so let's see, here we go. We've got to be very careful. We are somewhat surrounded, um, not really surrounded, but we've got some, uh, we got some opposition on the board now and, uh, they're stragglers. So they're going to be moving and, and shooting on their own. Um, so let's, let's just see if we can get to this Humvee, check it out and then escape off the board and get Xville out of here. All right. So first we're going to try to activate, let's get our guys that are back. Let's get them up in some cover. We're going to get in some, uh, we're going to try to get into some zones to, so we can get our, uh, so we can have cover. Here we go. So we're going to start with uh, River. He needs an eight. He rolls an eight. Thank you. All right. So River's going to now push up. Actually, he's going to, let's see if he can go here. That'll put him in the next thing. He can go here. So he can go here and there. Um, or he could go there and then here. Okay, that's what River's going to do. River's going to push. No, River's going to come here. River's just going to move here. He's in base contact. He's got a uh, solid cover there. And um, he is going to use his second order to fire at that enemy, al Hahid, who is, I don't know if you guys can tell from uh, your angle, but he is not in base contact with that car. So River has a uh, an obscured shot at him. So he's gonna take a negative one. He has an accuracy of three. That's gonna drop down to technically two. And we need a nine uh, because that actually you know what he will drop down to an eight because I don't think he can see any of these other Awa Haid fighters so River actually needs an, an eight plus or I'm sorry yeah he, the the Awa Haid uh, threat level is at eight sorry all right, he rolls a seven. He has three, but he's dropped down to a one, so he uh, makes an eight. Thank you for having that high accuracy. So he drops this guy. All right. Next up, we're going to activate. Let's activate Marizaldi, get him into some cover, and um, get him a firing zone as well. Again, he's eight. And plus, he, he has plus one to his roll. Um, so he needs a seven up. He rolls a 16. He's going to run here, get in base contact with these tires. I hope you guys can see that. Sorry if it's so far away. Let's see if I can zoom in again. All right. He's going to, uh, let's see if he can get an angle on one of these guys. Let's see what he has. He doesn't have a clear shot at anyone, I don't think. Um, let's see if we can get you guys a better angle too. So if we're looking over Marizaldi's shoulders, like so, you can see that he doesn't have line of sight to really anyone, any of the uh, Al-Wahid fighters. So he's not gonna be able to take a shot but uh, he's just gonna stay right there on the ready. All right, let's uh, 
keep on going with the action. All right, next we're gonna activate Singletary. Needing his six, we, he rolls an eight there. Singletary is just going to move up to the Hummer with his first order. And his second order, he is going to use, uh, he's going to search the, um, search for survivors, okay? So basically all he needs to do now is just roll a d20 and find out what the status of uh, the soldiers that were in the Humvee is currently is. So he rolls a six. And let's see, the mission has uh, from on one to three, the soldiers are missing. So we made it up to the Humvee and unfortunately the soldiers are gone. Um, but we have now um, secure, uh, completed that objective. We've checked, we've searched the uh, the Humvee. So uh, now the only objective left to do is to uh, move off the mission area uh, via the highlighted edge for um, to be exfil. And that edge is just off to um, Singletary's left hand side here. So his. Whew, his, uh, excuse me, guys, his uh, nine o'clock, roughly, um, um, or, or anything over there, I guess. Um, so let's, let's go for it, man. Let's get these guys out of here. Next up, we're going to uh, activate um, Baybrook. And let's see. Let's just activate him first, see what happens. He rolls a six. That's just all he needs. And let's see if he can get off the board. That would move him there. Um, that would move him here. So that would get him. So I'm using one hand now, guys. So that's going to roughly be there. I'm going to move his wound marker with him. And he is just about out of here. Now we need to get the rest of our team. Um, unfortunately... That was the last guy to go now. It's time for the sit rep phase. Let's see what we get. Contact rear, the enemy straggler or element nearest to the last soldier that attempted an initiative roll um, moves and attacks the nearest soldier in line of sight. So the nearest soldier or um, excuse me, the nearest Awa Haid fighter would be this Gentleman here on the edge of the board. I know you guys can see my table now. Um, so now he's going to he's going to move. He's going to go this way. Let's, let's get some of this terrain fixed here. So he's going to move the width of the card here. Let's see what he can see. He can see. He can obviously see Baybrook here. It's just not Baybrook's day. Now, so Baybrook needs to now roll, and he needs to beat this enemy Awahaid fighter's uh, threat level, which is a nine. So let's see. Baybrook rolls a seventeen. Luckily, he uh, the Baybrook moves out of the way just in time. And the shot goes whizzing by. All right, so that was Baybrook's activation. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the uh, sit rep phase. Um, and now all of our other Awahid fighters that did not activate from a sit rep card will now um, will now activate. Let's see. Okay, so uh, we can start with anybody we really want to. So we're just going to start with this gentleman here. He's going to now move. And they can shoot through each other. Friendlies can shoot through each other. We're just pretty much he's saying, hey, man, duck down. I've got to take this shot. So he can also see Baybrook. Uh, but it's his shot is definitely obscured with the, by the uh, palm trees here. So, 
Uh, Baybrook gets a plus one to his roll. Um, Baybrook rolls in eight, plus that one from being obscured is nine. So he meets his threat level. And the shot uh, goes flying by Baybrook once again. He's doing good. Let's move our other Al Wahid fighters. Going to move this enemy here. He he does have line of sight, so he's going to take his shot. And Mirazaldi needs to now roll a nine plus, so he doesn't take anything. He is in base contact, so he gets plus two to his roll. He rolls an eight. That's ten. So that enemy can not zero in on him. Um, and River is is tucked down behind those tires well enough. He doesn't take any he doesn't take any wounds. And now, last but not least, this Alawite fighter will now move. I believe it was somewhere around there. And he has, does he have line of sight? You know, I'm gonna give him that line of sight right there, just barely, but he's got it. And is that obscured? We're gonna say it is obscured because of the tires here. So let's get this shot from here, tires obscuring. And he's going to aim at River again. River needs to roll nine plus. Oh, four. So River did not duck in time. He's got his back turned. So with his back turn, he takes a shot to the back. He receives one wound. <laughs> I'm hit. Blood drips to the ground. That's not good. So that's the end of the sit rep phase. We're checking the... We're moving on to the clear phase. We've got our first objective done. Our second objective is to get off the board and uh, get the hell out of here. I'm gonna move my mission tracker. I think we're definitely on at least turn seven now. Um, and we're going to start activation with, let's get Baybrook out of here. Um, he needs a five plus. He rolls a 10 and he can definitely move off the board. Baybrook exits the board. He's going to taking his wound with him. Now we're going to let's see. We're going to ba -ba -ba -bum. we're going to go for let's go with Singletary. He needs a six plus. He rolls an eighteen. He's going to do an advance. Not quite off the board, but it's a start. Okay, next we're gonna go with River. Let's get these guys home. He rolls a 12. River's just gonna do an advance off the board here. So go there. And River's off the board. Take his wound with him. We're just about off the board. I actually think that would be enough to have a successful mission. Let's just check. We got to get off the board with at least three soldiers for the mission to be successful. So we just need one more guy to get off the uh, off the board here. Okay, let's go with uh, let's go with uh, Singletary because he's right there, um, and that would that would be a mission complete right there if we can get him off. And he rolls a 13, and clearly he can make it off the board. So that's mission complete. So uh, with that, you guys can see how the game plays, how the game flows. Um, for for shits and giggles, we can see if we can get um, Marizaldi off the board. So continue watching if you want to see that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for uh for watching the video. 
Um, I want to thank you guys so much for supporting Battle Space. It's doing phenomenal right now. Um, we put a lot of time and effort into to developing this game. Um, we wanted a we wanted a solo um, ultra modern game that didn't feel like you were doing a lot of work for both sides, um, which is why the mechanic of the threat level works the way that it does, um, centering everything around your soldiers. Um, we've got more content coming out soon. Um, we're working on the Navy SEALs, um, so that'll be the next um, expansion. The Navy SEALs, we're, we're going to have, uh, there's going to be six soldiers. We're going to do uh, four new equipment cards, and they're going to be um, a, a new enemy element that'll be introduced, um, and I'll leave that to be a surprise for you guys um, that pick the, the next expansion up. Um, other things we've got going on with Battle Space is we are getting all the artwork ready to become print on demand. Um, don't let that hold you guys up from getting a copy right now. Go ahead and get your copies now. Um, and then once the print on demand um, is available, uh, you guys can go back and pick that up. Um, and we just hope you guys are enjoying the game. Please leave a comment. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask away and we will try to get back uh, to you guys as soon as possible. Um, check us out on the, excuse me, on the Battle Space uh, community page on, fa on Facebook. Um, check out the Table Salt Gaming Designs page on Facebook as well. Uh, we also have uh, Table Salt uh, Gaming Designs um, Instagram page. So follow us there. We, we release some content that's kind of new for us as far as the Instagram page, but we want to kind of build the followers up there and uh, and just have a lot of content for you guys there. Um, other than that, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel and share, share, share. Again, um, the better we continue to do, the, the more we continue to um, get the book out there, the more we're able to do with the funds that we get from it. And so uh, that's really it. So without further ado, um, if you're still tuning in, we're going to try to get Marizoli off the board because no man's left behind. You got me? All right. So let's go. Marizoli's going to go ahead and activate. And he is totally outnumbered here. And he rolls a nine. That's all he needed to. He needed an eight, but he had plus one anyway. So he is going to, he's going to um, use an advance. He's just gonna he's gonna be so close. He's so close to exiting the board. But oh yeah. You know what? You guys may have not even needed to tune in for that. But now we're gonna go to the sit rep phase. Let's see. I have movement. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or terrain. You know, I've been getting a lot of these cards. I hopefully I check, I shuffled these cards really good. Um, but that kind of lets you know that, you know, these enemies can pop up anywhere. So he's going to pop out from the nearest door. So let's do this door this time. There we go. Now we're going to go again. Um, the second half of the sit rep phase again would be activating all of the enemy uh, models that are on the board um, that was not activated or um, manipulated even due to a sit rep card. So he's the only one that would be, um, let's just call it summoning sickness if you play magic, um, that's not going to get to do any sort of activation. Um, but the rest of these guys will. And so they are going to uh, try to make it out to stop Mirazaldi because they want to take a prisoner. They want to capture someone. So he moves he does not have line of sight to Marizaldi. Yes. This guy's gonna move. And he's just gonna, I'm gonna just put him behind a tree for so it doesn't fall here. This guy does. He's gonna move up. Excuse me, he's gonna move up here. And he does have line of sight to Marizaldi. As Marizaldi's running, let's see if he can duck this shot coming from behind him. He needs again. He needs a. Uh, he needs a nine plus. Rolls a sixteen. He is safe. And lastly, this guy right here. He's going to again run up 
right next to his friend here, and he's going to take a shot at Marizaldi. Marizaldi needs to try to duck this shot one more time, and so he can get it off the board scot-free. He rolls a seven. Not fortunate. Marizaldi takes a shot to the shoulder. He's not able to get out of the way of that stray bullet, and uh, he takes a wound. Now, um, I may have not mentioned this before, but every soldier um, can take up to four wounds before they are uh, considered down. Um, a model is down, he's just laid prone or laid onto the ground sideways. Um, and models can drag wounded models. Um, I'm definitely going to do another playthrough to, uh, to show you guys more. Next time it'll probably be on a 3x3 three three so you can get the full scope of the game. But other than that, let's see if we can activate Marizaldi one last time. Um, we've we've uh, going into the well. Let's go into the clear phase. Um, and so the clear phase would pretty much just say, "Hey, we check the Hummer. Uh, we got three guys off the board. Those were our two objectives. Um, so the mission is a success. Um, but I just want to see if we can get our uh, if we can get Marizaldi off the board because again, no man left behind." All right, Marizoli rolls a 14. There it is right there, 14. And with that, he exits the board. He is off the mission area. All right, that's our fire team off the mission area. Mission is a success. Unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, find any of the survivors, but um, they're out there somewhere, and our team's going to go back in. They're going to find these guys, and they're going to bring them home. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, uh, share, share, share. Go check us out. Uh, Battle Space is available on wargamingvault.com. Um, it's, again, doing very well, and that's all because of you guys. Um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, other than that, uh, welcome to the fight.